This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So today we have got a cooler. This is a two compressor unit that's two separate circuits here. I was here yesterday, didn't have enough time to finish everything up and because of the lower temperatures out, we're able to secure it overnight. So let's take a look and see what we had. So what we got going on here is we had an oil failure on this compressor here on the left. This one right here, as you can see, we had oil all over the place. I picked up some leaks here on my sight glass. I ran some brake cleaner on it to clean some of the oil off. And I went ahead and pumped some oil into it. But because we're low on refrigerant, I decided to just shut it off because it was short cycling. And even after jumping 24 pounds, 25 pounds of 407C in there, it uh, still wasn't making a dent in the uh, operation. Side glass looks awfully empty. And uh, so we've got enough time now we can get started on this thing. This thing's taking care of some pretty big uh, walk-in coolers, multiple evaporators in there in that same section. Let's go ahead and get this other door off and let's start seeing if we can find out where this leak is coming from. So I'm contemplating possibly valving this thing off and pressurizing the compressor because I truly believe that my leak is in the compressor. The pressure that we had over here was so low that it really wasn't that great. The detector was going off, but it just seems like it's leaking down here on the bottom of the actual base plate of the oil pan area. You can see this crap is all over the place as far as the oil's concerned, but you also have the pans up here on top, which will pull that in and just blow it everywhere. I'm a little leery about pressurizing it with nitrogen because if it would leak through those valves, it could go back into the system and there's not a lot of pressure on it to really push up against it. So even if I wanted to try to stay underneath of my actual standing pressure of the refrigerant, it may not be really beneficial anyway. So today, right now, it's about 49 degrees out here and I am not picking up any leaks so far. Like I said, I had already added some oil to it, but chances are our pressure on this thing is really stupid low right now. When it was running, I checked here on the discharge rotolock, didn't pick anything up. So when we was here yesterday, I went ahead and scanned the usual culprits around these seals on the filters. I did not pick up anything. Like I said, this pressure sucks. There's just, it's so cold out here. Everything's dropped in pressure. Those are optional. That's why we got a cap on that. I didn't do that. I walked the building yesterday just to see if we had any catastrophic leaks. Once they said, hey, we can uh, wait till tomorrow. I said, all right, let's go ahead and get tomorrow. So here we are. Look at that. Look at that leak. That's lovely. So that thing is leaking that bad with the cap on. Holy crap. Yeah, that's not good. I did not even miss with this yesterday. Oh, that's cute. Look at that, guys. Let's go ahead and put a cap on there that doesn't have a rubber seal in it. Brilliant, flipping brilliant. So yeah, brilliant. Look at that big old monster leak we got there. So it's leaking through that. Uh, the place I actually was adding refrigerant was back here on the suction dryer because I wanted to try to let it flash off before it hit the compressor. But that's, that's just lovely that we are leaking that bad. All right, got us a brass cap. Got some new toys here that we're gonna be showing off here for long. Got the Trade Fox, Jumper King. Picked up my own Posi Lock, big 17, uh, the 108, 17 ton polar. All right, let's go ahead and get this cap on. How many pounds of refrigerant did we lose because of dumb, dumb, poor practices? Well, they won't be reusing that cap not leaking now. Now see, that just makes it even more worrisome to try to trust that that valve there because if it can't even valve off when it's setting there in the ready state, let's let's just take a look and see if they backseated it or if they were lazy on that too. These garbage caps don't usually ever stop anything. They're about lucky if they stop the dust. Oh, well, somebody's got that nice and tight because you know, refrigerant pressure will never get past a plastic cap. All right. A little bit of a rubber 
copper seal in there. Now, even this being the bigger wrench, it won't fit that. I have some nice square sockets, but you can use a crescent wrench if you want. It's fairly tight. It does have a packing nut on there. Let's scan that thing and see if we got any leaks on the uh, packing nut area. Well, of course you do. That's nice. What kind of PPM mode we got here. Okay, that's generally what we got is the big blue. I just used the better spray bottle here. Okay, let's go ahead and soap this thing down. I mean, obviously it's not bubbling humongo. We can try to tighten that packing nut just a touch. There we go, we'll see how that does. Now that we've got that, let's just go ahead and scan over that compressor, see if we got anything leaking out of that area. Back on super mode, I was picking things up along the cracks and crevices of the bottom here. I wanna scan inside the electrical panel there. I've had these leak uh, around the terminals where it comes out. Let's see if we get anything stupid in here. Power is off on it. I am not picking up anything. Gotta remember this thing is probably 100 pounds low at minimum. So we're not looking for micro bubbles here. We're looking for a real dog leak here. Going back over that now with that there on super mode still, nothing. Not picking up anything here on the brass cap. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of the things, okay, do we have gasket seals leaking around the top here? What exactly is our major malfunction? And like I said, I did try to cl clean some of this crap off. It just is counterproductive when you got that much grease. I mean, once again, pressures are really low. Let's go ahead and get this thing warm and running. Slow pressure switch here, set to cut out at about five pounds. Unfortunately, it was very reactive and it was cutting in and out. We're gonna be adding refrigerant the whole time. So I'm gonna go ahead and bypass that because I don't wanna short cycle the compressor. To make it a little easier to stay in my area here because I really didn't wanna to have to fool with that stupid compressor. We're just gonna go ahead and do it back here. Okay, let's go ahead and get our hoses blood out and then we'll get started on adding. Right now what I'm doing is just adding one bottle at a time. So we're just gonna go off factory default of what refrigerant is in the bottle. We're not even gonna weigh it. Okay, right now we are on our third jug. We're at 240 for our head. The fan's starting to cycle. Just about empty on that. Sight glass is getting there. It's kind of interesting that they're cycling this fan here in the middle. So that's probably jacked up. It really should be the closest fan to the manifold here on the end. With the leaks that we had, sight glass, that leaking like a sieve. We're gonna go ahead and start searching now that we got like 200 and some pounds of pressure. We should be able to find any leaks on the discharge. My hose here was leaking a little bit. <clears throat> For whatever reason, those stupid seals, sometimes they don't hold on very good. You got tubing all over the place in here. And we're gonna scan all these diaphragms. I did take off my low pressure switch uh, jumper there. So many places for a leak to happen. It's just crazy. See how we're doing down here. Last time we were getting some pretty good size hits down here on the uh, oil fill. Oh, she shut down. She's happy. I'd say she probably satisfied, unfortunately. May have washed out the oil too. We're kind of like feeding it pretty quick. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, she, she pumped down. It's down to 10 PSI. So now we can at least scan the high side. It's got 212 pounds of head on it but the uh, low side, it's gonna be nothing there to set anything off. Nothing leaking on that suction. Oh, oh, a little bit of there on the suction. Nothing, probably humongo. We're on, like I said, super mode here. Yeah, I would like to see this completely degreased and all this crap knocked off of it. Like I said, that suction is so low, you're not really gonna get anything major off of that compressor. That's for your head pressure control, so open on, uh, Open on rise and open on differential. Basically you get a little bit bigger and you've got to basically use two individual valves just because the little bitty ones that you see just aren't big enough. What I'm going to do if I'm gonna go inside and get the lift because this is a real fandango to get around in here because it's all food area. So you gotta have your little hair nets and your feet have gotta get clean properly and everything's all sanitary so 
Uh, we want to make sure we got everything taken care of out here as best as possible. What we're going to need to do is open up that solenoid and let some of the refrigerant throw through so that we've got some pressure on that coil. Like I was saying, you know, we're only a 13 pound suction. You're not going to find a whole lot with that. So that's what we're going to do here in a second once I get hold of maintenance. Let's make sure that uh, they know what I'm doing and uh, we'll kind of go from there. If I had water and degreaser, it probably would be better, but for right now, I'm just gonna have to make this work. See if we can get some of that oil and crap off there. We're gonna clean up those edges where that crap's all at. Just try to get this crap off of the uh, compressor top that way. We can tell if we have any new leaks or not. Like I said, degreaser would be better, but I don't have any on the truck, so this is what I'm gonna make work. We got her cleaned up a little bit better. I mean, it's at least not obviously oily. Okay, we were running 240, fans are cycling. Uh, looks like we're a little low on refrigerant, depending on whether it's just now feeding or not. Uh, it looks like our fan control's right there. One, two, three. And one, two, three. So something's either out of order or maybe that's how they did it, but make sure it's going the right direction. Appears it is. Yeah, we're nowhere near as much refrigerant as what we need. So still, I think we're pretty much down to vapor. At least now we can see whether or not it's any fresh oil leaking from anywhere. I mean, this thing was saturated with it. And now we can see if it's leaking, just to make diagnosing it a little bit easier. Okay, it's running. <clears throat> Let's check our high side here, make sure we don't have anything leaking out of that, which it does not appear. Like I said, original, oh, see you got a little bit down here on the bottom still. Not sure what you're supposed to do about that. So we may have gaskets or something on the bottom that's got issues. Going underneath this head gasket here, picking up stuff on that, which is lovely. Compressor just shut off. Is your short cycle or anything? It was earlier when it was low on refrigerant. Yeah. Looks like we might got some leaks around the head gasket, which would probably explain why you've got such a freaking mess before. I don't know yet. We'll see if we can tighten stuff up. So the PPM mode is not always the best mode for finding leaks. It's just usually good. Well, it'd been nice to not have that just kick right on. But literally down here on that crack where the plates are together, we were getting up to about 40 to 50 parts per million. And it really is nothing else that would be causing that. I was thinking about seeing if I can get the torque rating and double check and see these i think this serial number is a 2020 and it's very possible that we probably had covid employees doing it which means it's probably done incorrectly all right so i wrote filter dryer cans are rated for 20 to 5 to 30 psi this is a cheap pittsburgh but i'll tell you what at least it's going to be consistently the same torque on every bolt so i set it up for 35 well guess what i'm finding out it's turning on pretty much all of them. So we've been going through and I'm tightening each one up until it finally locks up. Most of these I've gotten quite a bit of turn on and these here I've already gotten, but I gotta get in there a little bit further to get those back ones. We'll recheck it after we get done. Yeah, all right, here's one there. So yeah, it's been like that. So we're gonna go ahead and do the whole thing. Chances are it was probably put together improperly this uh everyone's saying that it's probably a year old maybe two years old at the most and it wouldn't surprise me so we're gonna go through and torque everything we'll see if it works there's probably crap in the gasket now probably too late but we can put new head gaskets on it now the bottom piece uh i'm sure it can be done uh but that definitely would require us to yank it out flip it upside down and probably uh redo that copeland's real close to my area and a good portion of these have turned, some are fixed, a little bit of a turn, and I know they have kind of keep on shipping them jobs out. That's what you get. Not saying Americans do a good job all the time anyway, because half of them are drug addicts or lazy or whatever, but look at that. Here we go, ready? Oh my gosh, look at all that. Now, this
this dumb thing didn't just loosen up. They either didn't torque it, and that's a 35. Hopefully that's the correct torque. I mean, if it's good enough for a filter. I got a hold of Trevor Matthews to ask him since he worked for Copeland, Emerson, whoever you want to call him that week, and see if he had any any answers for me, if he knew what the uh, correct torque was. I think it sucks. I don't think I can get on this bottom very easy, but yeah, I, I might be able to get on that claw foot possibly. I'm gonna do what I can on the bottom. We'll see what we can do here. Let's see what we get here. Still getting a little something, but nothing like we had earlier. Might be able to take her up to 40. I really wish I knew what the foot pounds were on that. I don't want to go too much. Let's see if we get anything down here on the bottom. Now I'm not really getting anything. I am just a touch, but like I said, I went through and wiped all grease off of that. Wow, we're not hardly getting nothing. So it might all be back here. I was getting stuff. Yeah, see, I still am. Yeah, see that? We got some major leakage on the bottom there. I can get to those luckily underneath here. Wow, now we're leaking at those nut, at those bolts. What a joke. Piss poor quality. We're gonna do a little web search. All right, so looking at this Emerson Bulletin, cylinder head, uh, head bolts, capacity control, blah, blah, blah. They are grade eights. They're doing an inch pound. So depending on what it is, there's 300s, 500s. Those are 40s, three whatevers. Let's see what this thing is. I don't remember. Maybe we can see it on this other compressor tag because I don't know if that took some of the tag off or not. Okay, this is maybe a 3R something, a discus. I can't read it because this stupid thing came off. Let's just say 300 inch pounds. Well, there's 12 inches and a foot. So at 300, divided by 12 be 25 hmm, go figure right at 500 divided by 12 would be 41 so i was doing 35 i guess we're just gonna stick with 35 we'll see how that does if it holds great at this point you know i don't yeah what do you know what do you know i don't know nothing so let's get down there and see if we can tighten them up all right this is gonna sound kind of chintzy but we took her down to high which is what half the detectors out there can do and when we check the head gasket there it does not go off but if i go down here to the bottom eh, it's kind of hitting every now and again on that the bottom plate all of the bolts were tight were not loose at all here back to super which you know the super is kind of for sniffing things out it's very stupid sensitive when you do that. See how we got, we're getting hits there. That's how I find leaks that everybody else misses. Going to high, which is what the old D-Tech had, nothing. So I always go on super just cause I try to find everything. But I'll tell you, from what I'm seeing, we just made it a hundred times better than what it was. I mean, a pound here or two there, I'm not horribly worried about, but 100 yeah that could be a problem what we'll do as always i put it in their ballpark we will uh say hey leaking along the bottom a little bit and uh if you want to fix that we can for you but here we are back on super just kind of scanning the top of the head gasket the bolts i had to get a, a deep well for this one there where they mount the pressure switch not really picking up anything now i got that cover back on the electrical i'm going to go inside and scan the evaporators but you can tell this has been going on for a while that, that crap that's all over is just ridiculous yep 56 percent crazy it's been lasting that long it is just crazy i got everything cleaned up it still not came on it went through a defrost thought we'd be eventually getting to it so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to go ahead relieve that let that go there it goes go too far down and don't release so you gotta, you gotta be right in the middle there it's kind of corny as soon as this thing comes on like that i'm gonna go ahead and kill it that'll let the pressure continue to build up a little bit i don't want to let it run for too long because i don't want too much liquid coming back it's right now boiling off through the evaporator so i just wanted to make sure we had enough pressure on there to pick up any leaks if there is any inside so let's go ahead and undo that 
And we'll put this back on that way we don't forget and accidentally burn the coil up. And uh, let's go inside and see if we can find anything. All right, so those lines come in right there in the wall and they come up and it looks like it's the back one right here. So they go across and they go to those evaporators right there. All right, let's go ahead and kill these. So we've got four monster fans here. We're gonna let that stabilize for a sec. Obviously it's turned off. We're gonna see if we can pick up anything coasting out. Again, remember we put up pretty much close to 100 pounds in this thing. So if it was leaking in here, it should go berserko. What I wanted to do was check the distributor tubes and inside this evaporator box. It's been running, so it's gonna suck all the refrigerant out and blowing it out, but like I said, if it was really hammering down and leaking, you would have it going off. Luckily, we got the lift here. That makes it a lot easier. So we've got this opened up and we're going through and we're pretty well sniffing all these areas in here just to make sure everything's clean and clear, which I already went through it, but just to kind of document it i'm going ahead and getting it on here i went ahead and went through each individual piece there didn't see anything at all and uh, we're going to go ahead and scan the back of the coil real quick can get inside here too like i said we should be picking things up if it's that big of a leak we got that one back on got this one off and scan this over and then uh, if there's no leaks we'll be done That's kind of interesting. Strap holding that bad boy up. That's pretty creative. I suppose whatever works. Okay, so we got this one opened up. We went ahead and scanned it all up inside there. Surprisingly, no leaks in there either. Scanned the back side of the coil. So good to go. All right, so while we're here, let's see if we can get this thing running. Then we'll be able to wrap it up. So they think this might have got damaged. It's a variable speed for a exhaust that uh, is up there. All right, guys, it's going to wrap that one up. Uh, as you've seen there, we had leaks all over the place and we got them all fixed. Uh, there's itty bitty 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 bit. I don't know. The one on the very bottom, like I said, is super, super, super small. I think the cost to try to get that fixed probably is going to outweigh any benefits of trying to uh, repair it. I guess we'll just go. Ahead. At this point, what we're going to do is just watch it and make sure that it's not becoming an issue. Uh, we've went ahead and checked all the other areas to see whether or not there's any other areas leaking. And at this point, I believe we're good to go. So if you guys enjoyed the video and want to see more like it, check out some of the other 400 plus videos. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.